whenever you fight, you have to convince them that you're crazy. So uh, because people can't really deal with crazy people and all the people around you will say he's crazy and everybody will leave you alone. So the more you convince them that you're crazy, you won't have any problem. I watched Prisoner's Daughter the other day, and it really was a moving film uh, from start oh. to finish. It's a great little character drama. Uh, what about the project really sparked your interest to want to be a part of it? I read the script, and I wasn't really looking forward to it. I've been working a lot, so I was kind of like not looking for a job. But I got the script, and I really loved the fact, you know, I've always been fascinated with the whole fatherhood, you know, how do we as you know, dads, you know, how do we make sense of how do we do a good, you know, because so many mixed results and you, you know, so that whole thing has always been very fascinating. And I love this script, the relationship that this guy has with his daughter or the lack of a relationship because of his history, choices he's made. Um, I have four sons. I don't think I have anything in my life that I have to really go back and apologize, but I have friends who, you know, and so that that sort of dynamic, how do you make peace before you transition? Also, the friendship was really interesting to me. Um, you know, I, I'm at a stage in life now where I'm sort of going, oh, so this is this is what senior citizenship <laughs> looks like. Um, and it is different. And um, so the script kind of, you know, that long history relationship, you know, guys who've been through some stuff that they would rather not think about, talk about, but, but there are people who know that part of you, you know, and, uh, that is still alive with them. And so all those things, the dynamics, um, uh, made me really, really want to do it. And Brian Cox, I'm, I'm such a fan of his, um, his work on secession is amazing, but he also directed uh, a couple of the episodes of uh, a series I did years ago called Oz. And, um, so I, I knew him as a director, but to get a chance to, to work with him as an actor was, uh, was, you know, I was looking forward to that. And Kate Beckinsale, I've been just a fan of hers. I think she's stunning. Um, and I was really curious to see how she pulled this, that, that part of Vegas that really doesn't get talked about very much, but that, that sort of survival space in the hot sun you know, so all those things were really kind of fascinating. Yeah, like you said, there's so many great elements to this movie. It's hard not to want to jump on board. Uh, but I love that you mentioned that there's quite an untold history uh, between yours and Brian's characters throughout the movie. And it's, you know, it's touched upon, but never really fully explored. And I'm curious if you and Brian or if you and Catherine ever talked about, you know, what the exact backstory was uh, for, for you two uh, prior to the movie's story. Not a lot. You know, Catherine and I sort of, you know, Brian and I, you know, some things you kind of, um, you know, you sort of come there. I mean, where, you know, but uh, I would like to have uh, really discussed a lot more. But I think the history, you know, the uh, being the kind of muscle hitman fighting has always been a part of, you know, my world. He's still doing it. You know, um, that whole Vegas gambling boxing thing all, all that um you know so all that is but we've never to some extent we discussed it but not not to the extent that i would have liked to so a lot of it was just sort of my taking the story and just sort of imagining um you know where that sort of um you know where what that history is um yeah so yeah and uh no, we didn't. Unfortunately, it's great in the old well, the old days, but sometimes you get a chance to, you know, not only just rehearse, but also get a chance to sort of hang out and 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 bring your your questions, you know. But um, but uh, you know, you, you discuss it enough to get the scene done. But that's um, yeah, I would have liked to have gotten uh, Brian's take on some of the stuff. Well, I can imagine too. What with both of your busy schedules and with the smaller production like this time is also hard to, you got to just take advantage with shooting. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And no, you know, they're trying to get it done in time back in the old days. You couldn't have imagined that we'd shoot so fast, but just trying to get it done over a short period of time. Also, it's very hot. And, uh, <laughs> and so it's enough to just, uh, and Brian had a lot on his plate. 
you know, because he carried the movie. And so all those words and the lines and the heat. And the, uh, so you don't want to, oh, this is something really, really important, but I, I really kind of got, we talked a little bit, you know, we had, when, when we're setting up for the scenes, um, but I would like to I always enjoy if we have time, we can go out and maybe have a drink or just lunch or just, or just hang out a little bit together like friends, but it just isn't time for them. It is unfortunate that that's how it goes sometimes. So then yeah. what, is, what is it like then when you have, you know, when you don't have that much time to try and build a, a believable rapport with uh, your co-stars? Because I really did feel that you two were longtime friends. But I mean, how is it like trying to build that, you know, with with a shortened time frame? I think it helped the fact that we I did know him from, you know, we did work together, you know, in New York. And um, so that always helped, you know, you, so seeing him again is like seeing a friend. Um, and um, you both know the story. You both know what that character is sort of struggling through until you put it together. And um, sometimes you you start a scene and you realize that no, we're 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 not on the same page here. And that's when the director comes into play. Catherine is just uh, amazing. But um, but yeah, I think you just sort of um, you know you 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 get a sense of of this person, who this guy is, you know, if he's bringing, um, his truth to it, you, 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 it helps you with that story. You know, who is this person? How would I have really, you know, it's hard when you're in a story and you got, this person is supposed to be this thing and I'm not feeling any of that. I'm not seeing any of that in this character, but Brian had, you know, it's, it's, it's not hard to imagine him having a history of, you know, not the best, you know, and, uh, and that's what good actors do because he, you know, uh, I always looked at, um, uh, Kate Beckinsale is, 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 is just stunning. And yet, uh, as an actress to be that, to be believable that you're stuck in this situation with no hope, because I think people look at you and go, oh, you would never be in that situation. But as an actress, knowing how we sabotage ourselves, it's, that's and that to me is what makes what we do really interesting is because um here's the situation and it's real it's happening you know people say well sometimes i can't agree with the lines i go but the lines just tell you um they notify you and inform you as to who you are because that's what they said and that's what they do and so how do you make that real and um uh, kind of a long winded answer, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, uh, when you're working with, uh, now if you're working with someone who hasn't thought about it, then that becomes a problem because even you can't bring your stuff to it because they can't interpret it because they haven't done their homework. And, but when you're working with the good people, you know, like Kate and Brian, and I was really impressed with the young, the, who played the, the son, going, I can't think of his name right now, but, um, there's some Christopher. Yeah. There's some young people who I think just are born to be a part of this. And, um, and as an, an, an honesty, uh, and a curiosity that really sort of helps, um, tell the story. Well, I actually wanted to come to your dynamic with Christopher next, because that was as much as, uh, Brian's and his, I really enjoyed seeing you two play off one another, uh, as well as even just the, the bit of fighting you got. And, you know, when you're, when you're working with, uh, stunts, sometimes actors might get carried away at times. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, did Christopher ever get, uh, carried away by accident when, when doing those, those training sequences with you? Yeah, no, he, um, yeah, he was, he was pretty much, um, you know, yeah. Cause you got to get close enough. Um, he might've hit me once. I can't remember, but, uh, but nothing so outrageous and a little bit of that you want, you know, because you, you don't want him to worry about, am I going to, you know, go too far, but he was, you know, he was, he was, you know, focused. He was there. And, um, the whole being crazy thing kind of came from, an uncle who, when I was a little kid, who said um, um, to avoid people um, bullying and picking on you, um, you, you have to you have to face it. You have to fight them. You can't get around that. But whenever you fight, you have to convince them that you're crazy. So uh, because people can't really deal with crazy people. 
and all the people around you will say he's crazy and everybody will leave you alone. So the more you convince them that you're crazy, you won't have any problem. And so as a little kid, I would sort of go there. The fight would be over, but then I just really go nuts. And then people go, oh, whoa. Um, so uh, Catherine allowed me to sort of bring that idea into um, uh, teaching him. In that sense, it kind of reminded me of my sons and that, you know, that mentoring thing. Um, I love the fact that once Brian's character is gone, that um, he still, you know, accepts that responsibility. And um, but uh, but yeah, no, he was uh, he was fun to work with. I'm glad that you got to have that that rewarding experience with him. And so, did you, as an actor, then get to to be a mentor? to him as well as a character? Well, a, a mentor in the sense that uh, I didn't really get a chance to spend, you know, a lot of time. But what I think when you're, if you're working on a set with people who really are trying to figure it out, trying to bring their best and they're really curious. Uh, so we got a chance to talk a lot about, you know, you know, starting out and being in the bed, working with and, and just, just whatever, you know, just honest conversations because out of that conversation, um, you know, questions gets asked sometimes and not even what's asked as much as just how you present the answer. So we did get a, uh, a little time there in the car and in the gym and uh, in between takes to sort of um, just talk about who, who are you and you know, where do you come from? But in the middle of that discussion, a lot of other things are sort of clarified. I'm glad that you got to 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 spend that time with him even if it was in the midst of everything. Uh for for my final couple of questions before I let you go, I did want to look away from the film. Um yeah. I, I mean it, like I said, I'm a fan, so to see you come back for Afterlife was uh absolutely incredible, but uh, I also love that we actually got to see Winston in a much bigger light than what we saw in the first two movies. And you've talked before about how there was some creative frustration with with Winston being kind of held back in those first two movies. You know, now that Winston is getting a bigger role with these with this and with the sequel, you know, how does it feel to see that sort of come full circle? Yeah, well, it's it's, it's good to because the fans have always been really uh, encouraging and supportive. Uh, the studio has always been sort of my biggest complaint. And and honestly, uh, a lot of people misinterpret it to say that uh, I think the studios did something they should have done. No, studios do what they do. You know, it's not me personally. It's, it's that's how they, they operate and what they feel is necessary. Um, but uh, Winston, I think his place uh, with the, this last movie, Afterlife did, was it gave him a place to be a purpose. I mean, there's a you know, he, why is he here? Well, he's the guy who has the money to keep this thing going. So that was good too. Wasn't so much more because we do have these new characters. We're introducing new stories, but he, he, he has a place, a purpose for being there. Um, I think in the earlier movies, you established the friendship between the three guys. They've already established a business. So how much do we, you know, and I don't totally understand all of it, but, but I, I think, um, but Winston definitely has a place now, how much of a place and all of that, that gets decided on by other people. <laughs> and so, and also as, as we introduce new stories and new, new characters, um, that is, that's what moves the whole thing forward. Um, but we're still a part of it. So it was great to see, um, you know, Bill Murray and, um, you know, uh, Danny Aykroyd, and, uh, Annie Potts. Um, but it's great to see them there and really just enjoying and enthusiastic about being there. Um, um, and it's, you know, it's, it's different. It's not necessarily uh, all the direction I would go in, but, um, you know, I just love being a part of it. And I think, I think the fans will like this new direction, but you know, we'll see. I'm really excited to see what comes from two. Uh, I really loved the new characters they introduced and I love seeing, you know, what Winston's almost set up as for the next right. movie. And I know you can't yeah. give anything away, but I'm, I'm curious how production's at least coming along. You know, I know filming kicked off, I want to say about a month or so ago. Yeah. Yeah. We're, um, we're, we, we finished. Um, the movie is done. It's wrapped. Um, I mean, obviously they're editing and doing whatever. I think it'll, I've heard rumors, the end of the year they'll push for, I don't know. And, or maybe spring of next year, 
Um, I never know how the studios are going to do whatever they do, but they, but the, the filming is done and uh, which is a little bit difficult with, you know, the writer's strike and everything going on. So I know there was a lot of shuffling around in terms of where it was being done. Um, but I'm thankful that we at least got it uh, done in the can. And, um, and now I'm like everybody else waiting to see what it, what it all looks like. Well, while we all wait for it, at least in the meantime, we have Prisoner's Daughter, which, I mean, I said it at the top and I'll say it again. It's truly a moving film. And I think wow. people who watch it are going to love it. So, Ernie, thank you so much for taking the time. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I really enjoyed talking to you. So, yeah, good luck with everything. And, uh, yeah, appreciate it.